You're watching a special edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, who's a candidate for dental implants? With us, we have an expert on the subject. If you are considering dental implants, my advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, who's a candidate for dental implants? With us, we have an expert on the subject, Dr. Chip Castine. Dr. Castine is the director at the Center for Implant Dentistry in Bakersfield. Dr. Castine, welcome back on the program. Glad to be here, Randy. Now, how did you get involved in dentistry, by the way? It was probably an accident. Um, you know, one of the truisms I think about life is you don't get your first brain cell till age 25. Okay. And that's probably correct with myself. I had a degree in human biology and a degree in philosophy, and I didn't know what to do with my time, and I started throwing pots. I became a potter. Is that right? And my potting teacher said, uh, hey, Chip, you know, this in 65 cents is going to get you some coffee, and you got good hands. Okay. So you need to go be a dentist. And that's So somebody what... told you to be a dentist? Yeah. Yeah, and that she, she told me to go check it out, okay. and uh, that was the spark. Let's start with why people lose teeth. People lose teeth usually out of periodontal disease or neglect. Let me show you a few slides of what periodontal disease is. Okay, you right? brought your laptop. Periodontal disease is a disease of the gum and the bone, and what happens here is there's too many bad bugs around teeth, okay. and you lose bone bad bugs. Let me show you a picture of what okay. bad bugs is about. It's what we're looking at. What you're looking at is calcified plaque underneath tissue that causes okay. the bone to recede and the tissue to become inflamed. It results in bone loss. Let me show you what bone loss is about, Randy. This is an example of teeth that have typical bone loss around them that have suffered from periodontal disease. So what defines periodontal disease, by the way? Is it a broad spectrum of well, Definition. what defines it is just loss of vertical bone around teeth. Oh, that's it. Okay. And once you lose the bone, I, I can't say you can't grow it back, but you never grow it back as well as it was, and your best result is pretty compromised. So you lose bone around the teeth. So this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. well, let me just show you what typically happens. On the left slide here shows that you have a healthy tooth, and you go through this process of uh, inflammation and getting things underneath the tissue that are difficult to remove. And the net result is uh, a scenario whereby you lose vertical height to bone, the tissue becomes more inflamed and in a chronic state, and eventually you lose the tooth. And the problem with periodontal disease is you don't know you got it. You don't know you got it until the teeth or uh, the gums are bleeding a lot or the teeth become mobile, or if you don't frequently go to the dentist and have a checkup, sometimes it bites people. But does this stop with dental implants? I wouldn't say it stops with dental implants, but I'd say dental implants are a solution for this problem okay. in that after you lose your teeth, you have a way of preserving the bone and replacing the teeth. Let me show you what typically happens here, Randy. Okay. You have a situation like this whereby someone has advanced bone loss around their teeth, their gums bleed, they're puffy, they're red, the teeth have spread and they're moving, and you can go in and clean them up. You can surgically go in and repair the tissues. You can't regrow the bone, but you can make their mouth healthy again. And then it looks kind of like this. They're cleaned up, they're much healthier than they were, but the problem is that all too often in a period of three to five years, they go back to their current state. And let me show you what that looks like. This is the scenario. You go through the process of getting healthier, all right, uh, by a surgical process, and you end up losing the teeth anyway. They revert back to the same problems that you had before the surgery. So all too often I would say that Sometimes when people have periodontal disease, the cause of periodontal disease is one of twofold. It's either genetic or it's environmental in okay. the sense that you're not doing the right things for your teeth to make them healthy. Most of my patients either suffer from periodontal disease, neglect, or I, maybe 20% of my patients have just had a tough time with life and they've been addicts and they've destroyed their mouth. Okay. Let me just show you what I mean by neglect and what I deal with pretty much daily and weekly. Now you say you see a lot of mouths that are messes, right? A complete mess. Yeah, here's you turn that around. Yeah, yeah. Here's typical mouth out of. Uh, That's typical. Yeah, yeah. Well, shocking. You know, it's just people. It's just people and their troubles. And uh, That's also 
common? That doesn't look common. Well, I mean, what is common to you and what's common to me, I'm sure, are two different things. But certainly, these are the kind of... But these are the kind of things that could be fixed. Yes. We, we fix them daily. Just people with catastrophic problems in their mouth, for example. And, you know, they're just great people. They're just great people. Here's a guy, Randy, for example. He was so scared to come to the dentist, he just... He would never come to the dentist, and out of fear, he never sought care. And that looks too far gone. No, it's not. In fact, he cleaned up really nicely, and he had some nice bone around these teeth. It just he never ever wanted to come in, and he was scared. So are there a lot of people like that? I mean, people that are watching this that are in this guy's shoes, yeah, think I'm just too far gone, or it's going to cost too much money to do it. What are their fears? What are their hesitations that you hear? I'd say money, pain, that's pretty much it. And what they don't understand is that we have anesthesiologists that we work with. We can put them to sleep. They don't have to remember okay. or feel anything. Um, for example, look at, look at this gentleman. He's, he's a truck driver. He's, he's in bad shape. He's epoxied his denture together about three times. He's got gross problems. He glued and, his own denture right. together. And this is how he smiles. That's his smile. That's his smile, and he doesn't want to smile, and there's a lot of people out there that feel that way just because they're embarrassed, and they don't know what to do, and they're fearful. Okay. Um, and sooner or later, if they wait too long, it just ends up on my table in a pile that kind of looks like this. Oh, okay? boy. What is that? That's the just a that? pile of extracted teeth. What I want to talk about, Randy, is more than piles of extracted teeth is the anatomical changes. People don't understand that when they get their teeth out, they think that their life proceeds in a normal way, and it doesn't. They get a sunken face look. I mean, that's after interviewing you the first time, I see it now. Right. The denture wear. Right. The face starts to collapse. Right. Here's why, Randy. The bone fades away. Bone needs teeth to be happy. And if okay. they don't have teeth, it's not happy. Right. And it atrophies. It gets smaller. Okay. And it gets significantly smaller. Let me show you a picture here. This man has had a denture for about 35 years. Okay. You can see how his lower chin has come out. His upper lip is caved in. Like a witch. All right? This woman has had a denture for about four weeks. All right? Mm -hmm. They're completely different in profile because they have different bone support holding up these soft tissues. Let me show you something else. Okay. This is typically what happens to a lower jaw over a period of 30 or 35 years after the teeth have taken out. So obviously in this area, the lips are going to be sinking in. Yep. And there's a very little bone support there. The tongue is enlarged. They, they don't have enough foundation to wear a denture, and they're very compromised. Okay, but just they're so lucky to eat soft foods. I mean, you either live with a blender or you eat cottage cheese for the rest of your life. Okay. But So I know where we're going here. The, if you catch these people early enough, with dental implants, they're not gonna lose that bone. That's right. Is that what you're saying? That's the key, all okay. right? You wanna do anything you can not to lose your bone, because once you lost it, it's no fun growing it back. And I'll show you a case where we grow it back for a while. Okay. But the public, do you think they just don't know? I mean, if there's 20 million plus Americans with dentures, do you think they just don't know the option they have with dental implants? They've probably heard about dental implants, but what they don't know is the anatomical changes that go on inside of their mouth after they lose their it makes teeth. Makes them look older than they really are. It not only makes them look older, it, it, it incredibly inhibits their ability to but bite too. with any force. Right. I mean, I can get anyone to look good. Okay. I can't get them to chew good. I mean, I need something to support these prostheses in order to put any force on them. Let me, let me explain something a little bit further here, Randy. Okay. Look at this slide. This okay. is a man. I took out his lower teeth. And I saved two teeth on the bottom so he could snap in his lower dentures. So I have attachments in these cut-off lower teeth. But look at the change in bone width here. We got maybe 9 or 12 millimeters of bone around the teeth themselves, but we only have 6 millimeters of bone in between the two teeth. Okay. So he's lost 50, 60% of his bone width within maybe a two or three year period of time, that's very normal. Okay. That shot kind of exemplifies the changes that go on real quickly in someone's mouth. This slide here shows how a little bit sunken in her face is, and you can see her x-ray over here. She is uh, severely atrophic in both the upper and lower jaw. 
She's been rebuilt with dental implants and grafts to her jaws. You can see how her profile has changed. So how has it changed her life, other than she looks better? It changes her life because it changes her diet. Like I say, 60% of nutrition happens in the mouth. And when you can't chew food well, it affects your entire life. Your choices you make at restaurants, how you chew food at the table, all these things, some of them maybe end up being subconscious after a time, but it dramatically affects their life. I mean, I've been telling you again and again, I can make anyone's teeth look good, but it's difficult getting them to function as a normal person. So with this woman, two implants, four implants, many implants, I mean, what does it take? Well, every person's different, but irregardless of whether it's one implant or 18 implants, we can make huge changes in people's lives. Let me show you, Randy. Okay, sure. Here's a patient of mine, classic uh, all-American girl. She's missing her lateral incisors. This is a genetic problem, okay? Mm -hmm. She was never born with them. Simply by placing two implants here, we're able to restore her smile, all right? Uh, now, that's cosmetic dentistry. I mean, it looks good. And that's dental implants. Mm -hmm. Now, what are her options? What if she didn't meet you, Dr. Castine? What would she most likely be presented with at dental office, missing those two teeth? She'd probably be asked to have a bridge placed to replace those teeth. Um, and what would have happened in the long well, run? Well, you don't want to do that because it just harms the adjacent teeth. You want to let good teeth be by themselves. So a prediction with this woman. Yeah. And if we could go back to the prior slide. With this woman, is your prediction that if she would have got a bridge or partial, that eventually she'd be one of the people with dentures in her 60s because of what happens, the snowball effect. Well, I think that's a little bit of a stretch, but certainly what's amazing, Randy, is how much money people waste on dentistry here because if she would have had bridges placed here, it would have certainly cost her, I don't know, maybe five or $6,000 to have bridges placed here. And that's hard to do in a pretty girl like this that uh, you want to deliver wonderful results for. Okay. But the bridges don't last forever. They have maybe a 70% success rate at 10 years. And so she's going to buy multiple bridges in her lifetime, and she's going to have larger problems. The time. Would that be a $20,000 uh, bridge she, and partial she's, thing she's, over her lifetime? Yeah, she's just going to spend tens of thousands of dollars on her mouth if she runs with bridges. So dental implants. Yeah. Very easy, very predictable uh, you for know, her. I wouldn't say replacing front teeth are always easy and always predictable, but it can be done, and we can do it well. And, uh, and they're going to last just like a regular teeth will last. Well, right? I, I warranty my implants for the patient's life, so long as they come into my office and say hi once a year and have an x-ray taken. Okay. But certainly this is the treatment of choice for her for all the above reasons. When teeth have problems, you normally get a root canal. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and root canal therapy is predictable therapy, but it doesn't last forever. Um, there's problems sometimes when you've had root canals, and many times front teeth fracture off or the root canal fails. Let me show you, Randy. Okay, okay. Here's a typical case of uh, upper central incisor that's had a root canal that's failing. So the only thing I can do for the patient is to take the tooth out. I don't want to make a bridge, so what we're going to do is place an implant and restore it with a crown, and the patient's running down the road smiling again. And I would hope that this could be successful for the rest of the patient's life. You see, we have our own technicians in our shop, and we're able to customize porcelain so that it looks very aesthetic and people have more than a satisfactory so result. So one of these front teeth is a dental implant? Yep. Can't tell. There he is. Let me show you something more interesting, Randy. Okay. More interesting than what we've already seen. Oh, yeah. Is that possible, Dr. Castillo? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. This is a woman that I built her two bridges on the lower left side where you see these dental implants here. Sure. Before we place the implants. So this is her third bridge that she bought, and I hope it's the last one. She's a wonderful 78-year-old woman. And what you see on the lower right side, this is the second bridge I built her, mm -hmm. and now we have infections at the ends of these teeth, so we have to take those teeth out and build her another bridge. So... Even though I told her this 15 years ago to go with dental implants and she was slow to come to the table with this idea, it forced her to pretty much buy six bridges in her lower jaw. And these will be the bridges that... The permanent. Yeah, we're going to bury her with these. Okay. All right. Let me take a look at this so I know what I'm looking at. These are posts. These are bridges on top of these implants. That's correct. 
And she did four of these, or three, three of these before. She did two this. on each side before she went to her implant supported bridges. So I mean, tens really. of thousands of dollars that were spent, I want to say for no good reason, but it was just a process that she had to go through. Now you have a big practice, okay. So, it, and you do bridges and partials probably every day. Yes, I do. But if it, if it was your own family member, sure. you would do implants 90% of the time over these bridges and partials? Probably, I hate to say the word 100%, but yes, I would. And it usually comes down, everything in life comes down to time, love, and money. But over time, it sounds like they spend more money on a bridge and partial over time in the long run, since people are going to live to 85. You bet. So is your message that think long and hard before you get a, dental, uh, before you get a bridge and partial? Oh, and look yeah. at your options for dental oh, implants. Yeah. You need to ask your dentist about dental implants. Okay. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Costs? People can figure it out. If they call your office and you have a big practice, you, you still meet with them one-on-one? -on -one? You bet. You meet every patient one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, for dental implants? We have a policy that we'll talk to anyone and take an x-ray of their head for no fee just to try to educate them and get them up to date on where they are. Dr. Kessie, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, I know you have a lot of slides. We'll get to them. And more about who's a candidate for dental implants and the process. I want you to take me through the process. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. It is now clear that not only are nutritional supplements vitally important to maintaining good health, but studies show that they can help reduce the risk of and successfully manage many diseases. I've done my homework and the nutritional supplements I take, give to my family, and recommend to my patients are from Designs for Health. Designs for Health, the leader in professional brand nutritional supplements. You've seen it on TV. You're probably watching it right now. The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information has been on your television over the last five years, is now on the web. Log on to wellnesshour.com, where you'll see some of the most intriguing interviews of today's top physician. Wellnesshour.com provides links to all your favorite doctors seen on the show, links to email host Randy Alvarez, and more. Don't wait another minute. Log on to wellnesshour.com and start feeling better today. Wellnesshour.com. Log on now. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We are here with Dr. Castine. We're talking about who's a candidate for dental implants. Okay, uh, back to the slides. What do you want to show me next? Maybe how easy it is to fix someone that's just got common. You know what I want to show you the most is this is what happens to teeth after they've had uh, crowns and root canals done okay. over a period of time. What people don't understand is crowns don't protect the teeth forever. They don't. And you get so what am I looking at there? You're looking at dental decay underneath two crowns, okay. significant decay, and these teeth are ruined. They got to come out. And people don't understand that just because you get a crown on a tooth doesn't mean that tooth's going to last forever and you don't have to clean it anymore. You need to clean it more than a natural tooth, and it only has a certain life expectancy. Just let me show you, Randy. Sure. We got 40 million people out in America that are running around with, without teeth in one part of their mouth. Very typical. Up here, no teeth, no tooth back here. Simply place three implants, place the abutments on them, restore the implants, and you have a complete arch again. It's not back. that difficult to do. You get your teeth back, you're able to chew better. Let me show you another case, Randy. This happens all the time. You get a typical case, someone has significant oral problems. Whoa. They have periodontal disease. We need to take all their teeth out just by placing one implant in the middle of their lower jaw and saving their upper canines and putting snaps on them, we're able to change that to this in a day. Is that right? That's the same person? Yep, same person. Let Huge me show you. difference. Dr. Kestin, what's the minimum then you need if you have dentures, as far as implants? What you need is at least two implants on the lower jaw. Let me show you. Make a big difference. Big difference. On the radiograph, it kind of looks like this, and in the mouth, it kind of looks like this. Just having two things on the bottom you can click into can change your life. So a, 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 a lockdown denture. Yeah. Snaps in, snaps out. Snaps in, snaps out. So what do these people say? I should have done it years ago. Yeah, they do. And they kind of kick themselves because they realize they're older now and they can't catch up on that lost So time. anybody's wearing a denture. So anybody watching this, if they're wearing dentures, two implants change their life. Yeah, I think it's the standard of care now.
Okay. And what I mean by that, it's the minimum that every American needs if they don't have teeth in order to preserve their bone and to provide function for themselves for the rest of their life. Now, a patient, average patient, could they be 60, 70, 80? Sure. I mean, I've seen people in this kind of condition at age 30, okay. but that's not what, where I'm going here. Where I'm going here with this particular slide is showing old teeth that have had attachments in them, and just by taking them out and placing implants in them, just three implants that we can tripod off of, and they end up looking like this. These are going to survive the rest of their life. They have great function, better fit, the denture doesn't move as much, improved chewing efficiency. You know, I, I, I sound redundant here, but it significantly changes their ability to eat food and be comfortable. So beyond two implants, what else do you do? Well, the more implants, theoretically, the better. Okay. Now that's true and it's not true, but just let me show you how we can stabilize things. Sure. This is a man who has three implants, a nicely crafted bar on top with four large attachments. We make the lower denture so that it's supported with metal work. So this is inside the denture? That's inside the denture it. and it clips on to this bar here and it goes in Excellent. just like a 30 odd six shell does to the chamber. It, He's not biting on soft tissue anymore. The force is going onto the bar and into his jawbone, stimulating his bone so his bone isn't lost. He's literally able to eat anything that you and I could eat. Okay. Now you talked about bone earlier. What, what happens if you don't have enough bone? Somebody's been wearing dentures for 20 years. Well, there's two things you can do. You can place an implant that places on top of the bone or you can grow bone. Let me show you a case of each. Okay. Here's a man who doesn't have a lot of bone in the back of, his, back of his mouth. He's very compromised. So we're placing an implant in the back that kind of goes on top of the bone. It's called a subperiosteal. It's very predictable and it works well. Um, it gives them wonderful support. Is this it, like a little metal cage that goes on top? Well, of let the me bone? show you a picture in the mouth. Here's what it looks like in his mouth. Okay. Randy, I can do chin-ups on top of that bar. All right. That's how strong it is. It's that strong. And it provides him wonder, wonderful support for his lower denture, and he's able to chew well, swallow better, and it keeps the bone from disappearing. Okay. You said that replacing upper teeth is more of a challenge. Yes, it is, because you've got to deal with smile lines, phonetics, how people talk, and you've got to recreate, hopefully, the natural harmony of the teeth that they had when they had teeth, if they okay. had good teeth. Now, let me show you an example of this. Sure. This is a woman who doesn't have any upper teeth. She is tired of wearing her denture and she wants nothing to do with dentures. So we're able to use a modern type of computerized tomography whereby I can do the surgery virtually on a computer. I can figure out how much graft material I'm gonna place, where I'm gonna place my implants, the number of implants, the length of implants, the stresses on these implants. I can figure all this stuff out using modern technology. I can graft the sinuses and place these implants and restore so that she's got a beautiful smile and nice lips. Those are dental implants? That is an implant supported upper prosthetic piece. Yes, it is. Wow. Give me a typical scenario. Somebody, they're missing teeth. Are uh, they missing all their teeth? All of their teeth. Okay. They come in. Well, typically what we do is bring them in and have a conversation about with them on how old their dentures are and what kind of foods they eat and what are their expectations is. and what kind of budget they have, and we simply take a scanning x-ray of their head, and then we complete that process by explaining to them what's possible. And maybe they only need two implants in their lower jaw. Maybe they just can't live without eating lamb chops, and okay. uh, they like tough lamb chops. I don't know. I've heard it all. But it usually comes down to, again, time. You give them one option, then? Your no, best option. No. I usually get, try to give them three to five options, and I run the gamut. You know, you can have that used Ford Pinto from 1976, or you can have uh, the new Lexus. Whatever they want. So even the most basic option when it comes to dental implants is going to hugely change their life. Is that, it, is that fair to say? Is that an overstatement? Somebody comes in with upper, lower dentures? No, it, it's not an overstatement because... Most of these people are really compromised. They're great people who've been missing teeth for a long time. They have ill-fitting dentures. And just by getting a new set made that has more retention, it does change their life. You and I talked on the break, and you said that you wish there was a try-in period with dental implants. Tell me about that. Absolutely. I mean, 
If you could just line up half of America that doesn't have teeth and has like normal, a denture wear. Sure. And just line up all the denture wares along the 405 or I 5 freeway. Okay. And uh, somehow magically drop two implants in their lower jaw and let them sna snap in their lower teeth. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't go back. That's a funny thought. If but there was a trial period, they, oh, wouldn't, they no, would never go back. Never. It would be ridiculous. They wouldn't understand why the hey they hadn't done this 10 years ago. So back to price for just a moment. Okay. What do you say to people that have you know, money concerns? You know, I would invite anyone who thinks that price is getting in the way, just come get in front of me and have a conversation. It's not, at the end of the day, going to be about price. There's going to be other issues that maybe we have to roll through, but they, most people don't understand how affordable they really are and how much difference they can be over the, over the long term period of their life. Now you do all types of dentistry. I mean, if somebody tuning in now would say, okay, well, Dr. Castillo, I walk in there, he's going to tell me I need dental implants. Is that not the case? Well, I don't know. Are they missing teeth? <laughs> okay, so yeah. if they're missing teeth, you are going to recommend dental implants. Absolutely. But not all dentists are recommending dental implants. I talked to one. I have a 13-year-old son. And uh, they said, well, the problem with dental implants is they fall out. What's your response to that? And that's, and that's what I heard. Well, you just saw me roll my eyes at the top of my head. I mean, Dental implants is a, a, a mode of dentistry that's certainly been more prevalent today than it was 10 or 15 years ago, but there is no better way to replace teeth for the long term than dental implants. And it allows people to save money over the long term. They have a more predictable long term result and they can be done just in a wonderful, comfortable way. Not painful. Pain is not something you hear a huge complaint about? You know, Randy, I can't sit here today and tell you that I don't know pain or my patients don't know pain, but certainly as a person that all he does is comprehensive reconstructive dentistry, we deal with it all day long in some fashion or form. But we do have wonderful anesthesiologists that we work with, you know, several times a week. We're able to give, we have wonderful drugs today to help with that. I would like to use the word discomfort more than I would pain. Okay. And, you know, Sometimes you have to go through a little pain to get to a higher place. Common misconception about dental implants amongst uh, the lay people and also amongst dentists. Hurt, too expensive. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the, the lay person. Well, sure. What about dentists? What are, what are the misconceptions? I'd say dental? amidst my peers that haven't been educated well, they're just way out of the loop, don't know the benefits and risks. Uh, aren't able to have good, meaningful discussions with people in regards to uh, the benefits of uh, implant dentistry. Dr. Cassine, thank you so much for coming on the show. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Randy. Sure. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like information about future airings of this program, or if you'd like to see this interview online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.